Okay, so the obvious thing to start with here is the twist, or both of them, I suppose you could say. Do I think that Amber was real and all the girls were real, or was only, you know, were, were none of them real? I'm of the opinion that we should never know for sure, not when it's fiction. You know, in real life, it's nice to know the truth, it's important to understand the world, but when it comes to fiction, we should not have definite answers to these sort of questions. There should be some ground rules, we should have a basic understanding of the world and such, but this kind of question is really something for each individual to make up their own answer to, and we should never get confirmation of any answer, if you ask me. However, as for the evidence, I can understand saying that Amber wasn't real, because although it is true that Mason did not talk to a lot of girls, and you know, the other guy says, I did see Mason talk to Amber a few times. This could mean that it was Amber, but it could also mean that there, you know, was a Amber, and that he just, you know, built on that, like he might have done with all the others, you know. Apparently Diana was a waitress or something, and, you know, there are points in the film where he actually spots one or two of the girls who he believes he killed, you know, so maybe he like saw them once, they said one nice word to him and he built it all from there, you know, maybe the couple of times that he talked to Amber it didn't really go well, you know. We don't know what a few times is, you know, maybe it's just twice, you know, maybe the second time, you know, she never saw him again because she didn't want to or something. So. I could see, I can agree with the point that it might not have ever been real, that they might have all been just him, you know, building on brief, more or less positive encounters, trying to work through what happened, I'll get back to that. Of course it could also be that they were all real and Berkeley has just been in denial because you know he doesn't want to think that a friend of his is capable of that he doesn't fully believe that Mason could meet someone and you know there could be reasons for why Berkeley never met any of them Mason might deep down realize that his friend is kind of not the nicest guy when it comes to women. And it could be that it was just Amber who was real. You know, because it does end up with the envelope of the two bus tickets and it really does take a toll on him, this whole thing, but that might be the revelation that none of them were real. If none of them were real, what he was throwing into the garbage were not, you know, that wasn't dead bodies, it was just paintings. And in that regard, maybe it would make more sense that none of them were real, because if a lot of bodies have been getting dumped in that same dumpster. There might have been some attention towards it. I don't know, maybe he picked different dumpsters. Maybe that dumpster wasn't right outside his house. He's been known to wander through the heavy rain before. But it is you know, a, a clever ending to have him leave, you know, and Berkeley not get to confront him with, wait, was Ambler, 
Amber really real. You know, the bus tickets, we don't know where he's going, they were open-ended, Berkeley might never find him again. You know, and if he is a killer, then he might go and kill. Now, the trauma. The whole thing is about how this psychological trauma of what we're pretty sure must be his father killing his mother. That's what the last pose is. It's his mother dead. That's my take on it. And it's him trying to relive that because that's what you do when you haven't worked through a trauma. You relive it with new people. You find someone else to replace the person that's gone, whether they just you know, broke off communication or dead, or if they're dead, whatever, you know. If you had a troublesome relationship with your opposite gender parent, then that might dictate your relationship with the opposite gender you know, especially romantic relationships, until you work through that trauma. And that's really what the title Spiral refers to, as I understand it, you know. He's spiraling downwards. He's not getting any better. He's just reliving it. And we don't know if they've all ended like that, with the girl discovering the last, you know, the last pose, or if it's been that he's killed them and then painted them or something like that, but he isn't working through it, you know. He's... he is basically crying out for help, but Berkeley is kind of... you know, that's, that's maybe where he can't quite handle it anymore he maybe he wants to maintain a positive relationship maybe he can't quite accept that maybe his friend needs more help than he himself can provide you know he's thinking to himself if i give him a job if i keep encouraging him to be social if i go along with this thing about these girls maybe he will get better maybe everything will work out you know the old standby for people who don't want to face the truth. That might be more or less it. Well, I did want to comment on that one line about, you know, Berkeley says, I wish they had fried your father 20 years ago so you wouldn't have to deal with this. I can understand that point of view, but I don't agree with it. The fact that someone is dead doesn't mean that you no longer have any issues with them. That's a bit of an immature concept. A lot of people do believe in this, but it just is not true. Speaking from experience, my mother died when I was 12, so I have quite a lot of unresolved issues with her, and if she was still alive, I could actually try to resolve those issues with her. I gotta remember to breathe. So, yeah. And the there might be something like partially genetic to the whole mental illness, you know, Mason having trouble telling truth from fiction, you know. having gone through a trauma alone is not going to cause that, is not going to make you question what is real and what is not. It, it can contribute to it, but to genuinely doubt, I mean, in tears, Mason asks, how can you tell, you know, that is not someone who has I don't want to say only, but if it was a trauma and nothing else, then it wouldn't have led him to 
second guess reality like that. And I think that is everything that I had to say about it. So, those were my thoughts on Spiral. I hope you enjoyed them. I'll see you next time.